a branch. It's Hello? Check, check. One, two, three. Hello, everybody out there in internet land. Oh, oh. the river I've been baptized I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb I've been changed from the creature that once I was and redeemed is now my name I've been changed, I've been changed I've been I've been new born. Born. Now my, my life, life has been rearranged what a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart oh yes I've been changed Though my sins were as scarlet, they're white as snow. I was bound, but today I am free. I was lost in the darkness, but now am found. I was blind, but now I see. I've been changed, I've been changed, I'm new born. Now my life has been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart. Oh yes, I've been changed. Like the poor Hebrew children, I wandered long in a bare desert land to and fro. But I've crossed over Jordan to Canaan's land where the milk and honey flow. When at last in his presence I stand above, he will wipe all the tears from my eyes. And I'll thank him for giving a wretch like me lasting hope beyond the skies. I've been changed, I've been changed, I've been new born. Now my life has been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart. Oh yes, I've been changed. Of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every. Kid. 
Amen. Welcome. Welcome, church family. How's everybody this morning? It is so good to see you online, and thank you for showing up. Um, listen, we got a wonderful um, day today, so let's hang in there. And uh, what we got going on today is um, you got your virtual bulletin. Make sure you look that up. Um, and then also we're going to be um, praying over we got the daily prayer at 10 and then we got a bible study at uh, six on wednesdays and there's no youth and young adults this week because um uh, until paul comes back so when he comes back then y'all get to hang out with paul all right um today i'm gonna read uh, from psalm 29 give me just a second you don't you just love technology <laughs> let me find my here we go. It's a Psalm of David. All right. Here it is. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks. And strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as his king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen to the word of God. Let's say a, let's say a prayer. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day and for us to gather in your house or in other people's houses, Lord, because you know what? This is not just your house, Lord. You're everywhere, and we have no walls, Lord, and I praise you for that, Lord, and thank you for everything that you give us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
time for the sleeper to wake. It's time for the old wind to change. I hear the spirit say it's time. It's time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the family. I just want to say real quick, I want to say good morning to Linda Halford. Thank you. Uh, Tammy for watching and Lynn and Beth. Thank you for watching. Kelly is on Marilyn Lynch. Mama Jan. Oh, good morning, Paul. Good to see you on here. And Libby and Evelyn. Good morning, Jane and Terry. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I just want to make sure I got everybody because I, I know I missed some friends. And if I did, please, please forgive me, okay? I, I want to get started back on to, um, there's two birthdays this week. And on the same day, how cool is that? January 15th, we have Paige Rollins. Happy birthday. And then we have Paul Tilson. Happy birthday to both of you guys. Um, and then I also want to let some let some of y'all know about some prayers. We really need to uh, keep people in prayers here. Um, Barbara Gossett had a fall and stitches to her hand as well as bru she's bruised up. So let's say prayers over her and Harold. 
And um, let's continue prayers over Coletta and uh, her family. And um, let's also uh, continue prayers over uh, Tammy's knee surgery. And Ken, he's doing well, and and um, he is at home. But um, let's let's please, um, I'm sorry, please continue to to lift them up, okay? And also, um, Ken, and your prayers for healing, okay? Uh, BJ is um, out of COVID unit. Praise the Lord. And we need prayers and celebrations for that. And uh, keep Linda in prayers, too. Um, let's also please lift up Miss Thelma Tate up as she is in the hospital battling some major health issues. So let's just um, keep her in our prayers, y'all. Okay. Uh, and Judy, uh, is it Muncher? Did I say that right? Okay. Thank you. And she's in the hospital, a friend of Kara's. So let's keep her in prayers too. And Samantha Jenkins is home and doing well. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, keep her in prayers for she is. Uh, has some follow-up treatments to be done. And I think somebody mentioned something about Sue Gailey. Let me pull that up real quick. Yeah, Sue Gailey is at home. Uh, after many tests, medicine was changed. Thanks for your calls and texts and prayers. So thank y'all. If there's anyone that I'm missing, y'all please put that in your uh, announcements here in, the, um, in these little scrolls here that I'm looking at right now. Thank you. Um, now let's, um, I want to go ahead and say a, a prayer over this, uh, if y'all don't mind. Let's... Um, Bow our heads real quick on this, okay? Dear Lord, I just want to pray for our church family, Lord, um, the ones that are in, that are home, that are sick, that are going through some things, Lord. I just want to just put your arms around them, Lord, and let's just um, lift them up in prayers, Lord. And um, I thank you for uh, everything that you do for us, Lord, and I just want to put um, a healing over these people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, y'all. Um, now, let's do the Josiah box, y'all. Okay, does anybody have any exciting um, things that I need to announce and bring that? Y'all know I'm old, old Miss. It's going to be hard for me to do now. I, I'm not, ugh, I'm having a hard time touching this. Okay, but I'll do it. So anybody have any um, exciting things y'all want me to do to ring that bell? I know some of y'all probably, I'm going to make her ring that bell. So anybody? Yes, I agree. Woo-hoo! I will definitely ring that because, you know, that, that, that is a, oh, my gosh, celebration. Oh, that is a celebration for BJ to be out of the COVID unit. That is a celebration. I did ring that bell for that, even though that was hard for me to do. <laughs> Anybody else has anything? I'm looking here. Oh, uh, no, I thought that was something. Yes. Okay, I'm ringing the bell for Paul. Paul, you know that was hard for me to ring that bell. But I did that for you because you're out of isolation. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I did forget to, y'all, let's just remember also, I know this is not part of the side box, but we do re- need to remember the people that are in the health department. You know they're having a hard time. Nurses and doctors, we need to make sure we keep them in the press too. Somebody reminded me of that, and that's great. Thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, any other does anybody else have anything to praise? Okay. All right. Well, then let's um, go to the offering, y'all. Now, make sure, and we'll give you some time to get your check or your money and put it in an envelope and mail it. Don't, put, don't mail cash. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but mail your checks to us, please. Um, we're going to put that. There we go. We got the address up there on the screen there. So y'all please make sure you mail your, um, your offerings to us. It does help not only just for the church, but everything we do outside the church, because our church is not only these walls, but it's outside the walls. So y'all make sure you do that. Okay. All right. And we're going to play a little song of praise here to get us moving and going to do that. Okay. Take it away.
to worship you. And it's my joy to speak your name. And it's my joy to be in your presence. It's my joy. Yeah, it's my joy. And it's my joy to please you, Lord. And it's my joy to honor you. It's my joy to give you the glory. Yeah, it's my joy. It's my joy. And I will sing hallelujah to my King. I will lay my heart down at your feet. And I pray what you hear and what you see brings joy to me. Bring joy to me. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy. It's my joy to worship you. To worship you. It's my joy to speak your name. Speak your name. It's my joy to be in your presence. Thank you so much. All right, now I'm ready to introduce you all to someone you all know, Kara. She's going to do the children's time. Y'all know she's got the sweetest soul in the world, okay? So take it away, Kara. Good morning. This morning I'm, I'm without small children, but I have children <laughs> here, children of God. Uh, we're so glad you're here this morning. I got to thinking about some things that were happening, and I thought, oh, by the way, Happy New Year, and it is going to be a Happy New Year, and we might have a few things to battle, but I want you to know you have control. So I'm going to start with an idea, and it's called kindness, and I know you've heard me talk about acts of, of random kindness and things like that in the past, but it's very important now that you realize acts of kindness and changing this world are in your hands. And we need y'all to go out and do these things to reach out and change the world. So after church is over, and I have a pan here to give you an example, I want you to go to your kitchen sink. I want you to fill up your kitchen sink three-fourths full, not to the top, three-fourths full. It can even go half. I know moms are going to be a little concerned. But anyway, fill your sink up. And I want you to act as if your sink is the world. And the water is all the people in the world. And your act of kindness is some items. Now, you need to go get a couple of items. They can be similar or they can be different. But in this case, I brought similar. I've got a large rubber band, skinny and long, and I've got a thick, short rubber band. 
I also have two paper clips. I have a larger one and a smaller one. And then I also have a heavy rock and a screw. So gather several different items because it's very important. Oh, wait a minute. I brought sprinkles. I got sugar sprinkles and I got little pellet sprinkles. I thought that was important too. Because I'm sure y'all been making cookies over the holiday so you would have this in your pantry. So what I want you to do is you're going to go to your sink after it's half or three-fourths full. Remember, that's the rule. And then I want you to go and I want you to drop. And yes, I don't have water in here because you won't be able to see it. I want you to drop your rubber band in or whatever item and look for the ripples. See how the ripple is. See how big the ripple is. See if it's a small ripple. See how quickly it moves. And then take a smaller item and drop it in and see how the ripples move. If you want, you can even do both at the same time. And then I want you to take another item. Don't remove it yet. And drop another small item and another large item. Watching how the ripples move. Then I want you to take your heavy item. It's probably going to splash. And a smaller light item. Again, looking at the ripples. Now, the ripples may be smoother sometimes, and they may be a little messier with others. And then I want you to take your sprinkles, little sprinkles. Look at the tiny ripples. And then bigger sprinkles. Wow. You're going to see these ripples. And it's amazing how these ripples will go out. Remember, these Items are act of kindness. And if you go out and you share these acts of kindness, you will see a ripple effect. But I want you to think about something. I have two questions you need to think about when you're doing this. I don't want to mess up the question, so I'm going to read them. If small acts of kindness create ripples, can there be an act of kindness that is too small to create a ripple? So anything I drop in here, is anything too small to create a ripple? And the second question is, can many small acts of kindness together create as many ripples as one large one? So you're going to see this when you do this, but I'm going to tell you something. Any ripple in this world will fan out. And it will be contagious and it will reach others, even people you don't know. But I want to tell you something I learned. And yes, I do these things. So when I did this experiment, then I reached in to take my items out. And the coolest thing happened. Drips of water came off of these items, making me think the hand of God reaching in, touching your acts of kindness created hundreds of tiny more ripples, helping others to see God in your acts of kindness. So do this in your bathtub while you're taking a bath. Do this in your sink. Do it more than once. Do different items. Sorry, parents. Take a chance. I want you to even know something as small as a grain of salt can even create tiny, mini ripples. You got to look close. But you know what? That's all God needs is one little ripple to make it work. So I'm not asking you to do this just today. I'm not asking you to do this just for the week or the month. I'm asking you all year long, start these acts of kindness. Think of what these items can represent. A phone call, a card. Maybe you can help your mom bake cookies to take to someone. You have no idea how you are going to change 2021 because, guys, you're to go out there and create all the ripples. And when God goes in and touch your act of kindness, you have no idea how kindness will spread. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear Father, I ask that you bless these children. You help us to know what our responsibilities are. Help us to see it is what you call us to do. As you say in 1 John 3.18, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Dear Father, these deeds are these acts of kindness we speak of. 
I pray there is no child too young to hear this message. And I pray they are all willing to spread your love through acts of kindness. Dear Father, 2021 is going to be better, and it's going to be the best year yet. Because we are getting to see how you are going to overcome our world. But dear Father, I know you need us to continue to lift each other up, and you need us to continue to hold hands with one another, even in distance. So help us, dear Father, to get creative with these random acts of kindness and help us cause ripples across the world that cannot be stopped. All glory be yours. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to welcome Wyatt Stevens, our um, guest preacher today. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, oh, I'm on. It's happening. Um, and good morning. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. I'm glad that you've joined us online. There's a small group of us here. Uh, this morning's scripture comes from the book of Mark. It comes from chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 4 through 11. Verses 4 through 11. This is the Word of God. And so, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the peoples of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, He saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on Him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are My Son, whom I love, with you. I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, this morning, come to us wherever it is that we are. Rest on us. Open our hearts and our minds to new ideas and and better understandings of of who you are and the way that you work in the world. Open our eyes to see you more clearly and help us to know you to the best of our ability. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I am exhausted. The last 10 months of all of our lives have been extremely challenging, right? Golly. I don't... I don't remember a time more challenging. Uh, We've pushed through an election year that felt like it would never end. Our young people are attending school in a way they have never experienced before. I'm attending school in a way that I've never experienced before. Many of us are working digitally, um, or at least partially digitally. And those of us that do get to go into work are separated from the people that we're around. It's really easy to become lonely or isolated, or it has been. And on top of that, I know we have all been affected by COVID-19, whether we've uh, had it, whether we've known someone who's had to quarantine or, or worse, hospitalized. We've all had a long 10 months, and frankly, I'm tired. I'm really ready for this time to end, uh, but it keeps dragging on. I'm going to share a story with you this morning. It's one of my favorites to tell. So uh, if it sounds rehearsed, it's because it's rehearsed, okay? But don't, don't worry about that. Um, so when I was 16 years old, I was a lifeguard. And let me tell you, the best job for a 16-year-old kid to have is being a lifeguard or at least 
in my opinion it is. If you were not a lifeguard or you were not a good swimmer, you may think that it could be nerve-wracking or stressful. Let me assure you that this is not the case. A lifeguard spends most of their days, if not all of their days, hanging out in the sun, getting tan, going down water slides, jumping off diving boards, uh, and all other lifeguards are also teenagers. So all of your friends are there. In my case, literally all of my friends were lifeguards with me. That's why I did it, right? And so we're all hanging out and having a fun time. It truly is like the epitome of a good time. And looking back on that time now, specifically like today, I'm like, man, it'd be really nice to be 16 and be a lifeguard and just be sitting there doing my thing and not having to worry, making sure everybody was okay, of course, but also having a blast while doing it. The first pool that I worked for was called the Gilly Pool. All right, that's a really funny name, the Gilly Pool, right? It was at the Civic Center in McMinnville, Tennessee, as if you've ever been to the Civic Center in McMinnville, have any of you guys been to the... No? All right, well, good. Nobody here has been there, so I'm going to describe what the ghillie pool looks like because this is where our story takes place. So if you picture, like, you know, a rectangle, at the bottom of the rectangle or at the, at the bottom of the pool is the shallow end, and the shallow end at the ghillie pool was a, what they call a zero-entry shallow end pool. So it was like the ocean. You walk out into it and the water gradually gets deeper. You don't just like jump in. You get to walk out into it. Um, And then, so if the bottom is the shallow end, there's this zero entry. There's these two concrete like pathways that kind of protrude out into the pool. And then in the middle of those, there's this little lane of water that goes through and you could walk through or swim through that area and you get out into the deep end. So if the deep end's up here, And there's these two little things, and there's a shallow end, right? And then in the deep end, over here on the right, there's diving boards and stuff. And then over here on the left, there is uh, lap lanes, like swimming so people could exercise and stuff like that. On the right and the left of the shallow end are two slides. On the right side, there's what I like to refer to as the big slide, the slide that everybody gets to go down. It's a ton of fun. It's just about, you've got to like climb stairs to get to the top of it. It's a big slide, right? And on the other side, I call these the kitty slides because, one, you, 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 like if you were taller than this, you weren't allowed to go on them. So they told me that I couldn't play on them. Um, so you can't go down the kitty slides if you're taller than this. And the water on that side was a little more shallow than the water on the other side where the big slide is because people are coming down. They're bigger people, right? So, on a hot July afternoon in 2013, you could find 16-year-old Wyatt sitting near the big slide over here on the right side because there always had to be a lifeguard over there. It's a fairly dangerous area, or at least that's what they told me when I got there. So I said, all right, I'll sit over here by the big slide. So I'm sitting there. I'm tanning. I'm sort of kind of watching as best I can, really basically just hoping that nobody got hurt. Because contrary to popular belief, lifeguards don't actually want to get in the pool. We're doing all that we can to avoid getting in the pool for multiple reasons. One, if you got in the pool, it means somebody was hurt or needed you, and that's not ever a good thing. But also, because once you got in the pool, you had to get out of the pool. And when you're out of the pool, especially on a day that I'm, like the day that I'm describing, it's kind of cloudy. You get cold out there. You get all wet, and then you're sitting there and you're in your little puddle, and you're cold, and you're watching these everybody else have fun. So you're doing the best you can not to get wet. So there I am, trying to stay dry <sighs> at the big slide when this group of adults, like fully grown human beings, four or five, maybe six of them, start taking off up the stairs towards the top of the big slide. And I know this is not going to go well for me because I know none of, none of you people at home or here would be the type of people that would want to get the lifeguard wet coming down the big slide. These people, they, they, really, they were trying to get, to get Wyatt wet, and that is not good. So I knew it wasn't going to end well for me. And so I sit there. And I know they're coming, and here they come, this group, one after another, each splash larger than the last one, right? And I'm sitting there, and it's like raining down on me. 
I'm there in my sorrow and sadness, sitting cold, wet, and they're over here in the like right off to the side of uh, the big slide, like little exit area, and they're like high fiving each other, like yeah, we got the lifeguard wet, yeah, good job, the whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, you guys keep laughing, right? Just keep laughing, and then. Uh, following this group of adults as I'm frustrated and upset comes this little girl who slides down off the big slide and plops into the water. And I see her and I'm watching her and she's there, she's underwater. I'm like sitting there looking at her. Uh, Because you see, at the ghillie pool, the big slide is dangerous because the water, like I described earlier, underneath the big slide is deeper than the water where the kitty slides are. So often, small kids who weren't great swimmers or who really couldn't swim at all could go down the smaller slides on the other side of the pool and kind of like, you guys ever seen like, like a four-year-old who can't swim well? They got their head up like that. They got their head up like that. You can't hear me if I do it. Uh, and they're like bouncing. And they bounce to the side, and they climb out, and they just keep going down the side. Well, eventually what happens is they go down the kitty slide enough that they get really, really confident in going down slides. And they see the big slide, and they've been there all summer. Remember, this is July. These kids have been there forever, man. They, every day it feels like these kids of the same group are there hanging out. And so they get excited. They get confident on the kitty slides, and they go to the big slide. They don't realize that it's deeper water over there. So when they come off the slide, they're either caught off guard by the fact that they can't touch or they are not good swimmers at all. So even if, you know, like when they can't touch, they get freaked out. And even if they were good swimmers, they might get freaked out. Uh, And they get stuck under the water because in addition to all of that, the water that runs off the end of the slide kind of drops in and creates this little whirlpool area so kids that aren't good swimmers get stuck underneath that ball of water. Well, on your first day when you're there and you're being a lifeguard, the the head dude who has somehow made a career out of being a lifeguard comes to you and says, this is what's going to happen to kids here. You just, you just drop in, you pick them up, you set them on the side of the pool and you say, don't go down the big slide. Right? And so this girl comes off the end after this group of Adults comes down, and she gets stuck underneath this ball of water. And I'm sitting there, I'm wet, remember, and I'm already upset that I'm wet at these people. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm watching her for what was probably only a couple of seconds. But it felt longer than that, and I was like, come on, just just swim, man, just swim. And I look at the adults who are really close by, like, like if I had thought of it, I could have been like, hey, dude, grab her real quick because you're already in the pool. I didn't do that. I did the job that I was supposed to do, and I plopped down in there with my little floaty, and I pick up the girl, and I set her on the side of the pool, and I say, don't go down the big slide. Then, right after that, one of the adults from the group who just commits to splashing me comes over, and he puts his hand on my shoulder and says, no, man, she can swim. And at this point... I'm even more frustrated, right? I'm like, no, she can't. You know, and I give, uh, I give who I assume was her father or an uncle or something, the person that she was there with, I give uh, the little girl to him and I get out and I climb there and I'm sitting there and I'm just minding my own business after that. And a couple of weeks after that, or some time after that, I was telling this story to one of my friends. Um, and... For some odd reason, this lesson struck me out of that experience that I had. And for the first time, I know that God was speaking directly to me in some sort of divine way. God said, there are people in this world drowning. And sometimes you are the only one who sees There are people in this world drowning. And sometimes you are the only one who sees. This is the first time that I remember feeling some sort of urge on my heart to to be a part of something bigger than myself. To be a part of something that, that God ordained for me to be a part of. Right? 
this calling moment of God saying, sometimes you are the only one who sees these people in need. This morning, we read a story that we are all familiar with. Right? Jesus' baptism. It happens um, in multiple Gospels, and we can read about it. This one, in particular, we read from Mark chapter 1. We read about this divine moment where the heavens are opened and the Creator speaks directly to our Redeemer saying, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And God's Spirit descends on Jesus. It is no coincidence that this is in chapter 1 of the book of Mark. This moment, this opening up of heaven and this descending of God's Spirit on Jesus Christ sets off or sets up this stage for Jesus to do all of the things that we're going to read about in the rest of the Gospels. Right? He spent his whole life preparing, I'm sure. But this moment, this baptism that Jesus experiences... One, compels Jesus to go out into the wilderness right after this for 40 days and 40 nights and fast and He's tempted and faces the devil. But on top of that, it sets up for all that Jesus will be doing throughout His ministry. All of the healing, the teaching, the loving, the caring, all the resisting, the suffering and the marginalization he will feel from his own people is set up at this moment. And while I don't know it for a fact, I imagine that this special space and time in Jesus' life is something that he could go back to. Right? This overwhelming washing of the Spirit inside himself empowers him to go forward and to continue on doing the thing that he is called to do. Paul messaged me on Wednesday to ask if I could help bring God's Word this morning. And normally when I get asked, I'm like, okay, give me a couple days, I'm going to mull it over. Well, he texts me on Wednesday. So uh, Thursday and Friday I spent time mulling it over and, and I, I came to the realization or maybe the, I felt an urge to say, Remember. Remember. I kind of pictured it like Mufasa. You guys seen The Lion King? Right? Uh, Mufasa in the cloud. Yeah, when Simba has got, been gone from the kingdom for a long time, and then Rafiki, he runs into Rafiki the baboon. My favorite character, right? <laughs> Rafiki, man. Um, and Rafiki leads him across the plains and into the wilderness where he finds his father who comes to him in a vision and says, Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Well, today I say, Remember why you are. I told you the story about the little girl that I picked up out of the water who needed help when nobody noticed. Because that is why I am. Right? This thing that set off what feels like the, my entire life, this idea that maybe it's one person, maybe it's two, but somebody is drowning in life and in some sort of just whatever it is that they got going on. And that maybe, just maybe, I am the only person who can see and can be there in some way. So it set off this path for me to walk, and I know that there are moments in your life that you can recall where you too felt some sort of urge to be a part of something bigger than yourself or you wouldn't be logged on this morning checking out what we got going on at Olive Branch Cumberland Presbyterian Church or sitting here. There wasn't something that set off what is going on in your heart, something that was brought to you or showed to you by God, God's self. And so, uh, this morning, 
instead of uh, what I what, really what I like to do when I get a chance to preach is I, I like to say something profound, right? Or I because I'm a seminary student and I'm very astute. You know, I know a lot of things, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna really show them today. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them something they don't know. You know, and I'm gonna say something profound. I'm gonna make them rethink how they look at scripture or reimagine God entirely. But this morning, I don't really want to do that. I simply want to encourage you that even though church feels different, even though the world in general is in fact different, and and frankly, I don't know if we'll return to the same thing we remember, I do know that that calling or that moment or that experience, that pull that you feel on your life from God stays the same. So I want to encourage you that, that we are, we're all in this together, right? And we're all trying our very best. But don't allow your exhaustion or your frustration or your disappointment with all that you see going on in the world take away from the fact that we are all still called by God to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. So this morning, remember why you are. Remember. Amen. Uh, Let's pray. Or will you pray with me as the band comes forward so that we can can sing and and hang out just a little bit longer. (sighs) God, we are so thankful uh, for the opportunity to be here to worship you and to feel a little bit closer as we leave our computer or leave this space that we have created. God, just lead and guide us and fill our hearts with your Spirit so that we are, in fact, ready to take on another week. We are, in fact, ready to take on another day. And that we remember that we are all called to something extraordinary. So God, guide us. Of the night.
joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 